How you doing, Gerard? Excellent. Talk to me. All right. This, qu this question is for Hal Baskin. Yes. At the very present time, you have people that are clearly representing you, who are threatening people to vote for you. Is this the type of leadership and control you would use to run the 16th Ward if you were elected? I'm, I, thank you. I have uh, an organization called the 16 Ward Political Task Force. I've been registered people to vote uh, in the deputy registers program since 1984 under the Harold Washington. And we will continue to knock on each and every door to get everybody registered that we possibly can. Um, those people who choose not to get uh, registered by a deputy register, they can go downtown or they can go to any public library. But I choose to bring that service to the doors mm -hmm. of the people, knock on each and every door and give them an opportunity to become registered voters and become a part of the process. Part of the process. I've got to go back to phones. I'm going to come to you, Roderick Sawyer. Let's talk just quickly about knocking on doors. Have the three of you been able to knock on doors? Last week, we talked to some incumbents. One of the incumbents said they didn't have time for that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I You're running for an office. Talk to me. Roderick Sawyer. No, we knock on doors. We go to the L stops. We go where we find people. You know, we don't sit in our office and just wait for people to come to us. We come to them. That's part of our task of being proactive, being accessible to people, making sure that we can come to them and address their needs before they come to us. Hal Baskin, knocking on doors. I haven't walked the ward five times. We have knocked on each and every door. I was just out today knocking on doors uh, in the new city area. Uh, I will continue to knock on those because doors because those robocalls, mm -hmm. those incumbents are sitting out. People are getting tired of them. Mm. They want to see some flesh. They don't want to see special interests spending a lot of money on literature and robocalls. They want to see you in the flesh. They haven't seen you in three and a half years. Now all of a sudden, he just said, all this literature, somebody vote for me and I'll set you free. That's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. You got to knock on doors. You got to test some flesh. You got to talk to the people. It's they got to know that you're There's nothing wrong if, if the robocalls are taking place, though. There's nothing wrong with a robocall. It just means that it, the candidate has money to get robocalls it, in the mix. It's not, uh, and nothing wrong with the robocalls. The robocalls was used during the, the, the snow blizzard to let people know that <laughs> this is what's going on. This is what's happening. This is what you need to do. Especially when they knew four days before uh, the storm. I, I, was absolutely. Coming. So right. there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're, there's nothing wrong with robocalls that used for the right reason. Oh, Absolutely. man. You know what? I, I, I see you on the end there, Jay Smith. Let me go to phones. I think I'm going to go to Calvin and parking meters. Calvin, talk to me. You're on off 63rd. Calvin, what's on your mind this evening? Thank you, Gerard. I just want to know. I'm a constituent of yours. Uh, uh, I want to say Ultimate Sawyer. I might as well say that because I'm voting for you anyway. Oh, so thank you very much. My plan is this. Uh, I'd like to know what can happen with the parking meters. I'm driving down 79th Street, which has been a major free street for years, even when your dad was in office. Now I look, it's parking meters over there. I don't know what ultimate Lyle has been drinking, but guess what? <laughs> she been drinking the wrong kind of poison because I'm not voting for her when it comes around. Wow. But I'm just saying, I'd like to know what would you propose or what would you talk to once you got in the office, the constituents, all the aldermen about the parking meter business, because I think it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, I'm a senior citizen. I mean, if I had money and my last name was Gates, it'd be fine. But guess what? I don't have it like that anymore. Wow. And for me to be charged extra money, you know, to park in a free space that's been like that for years, I think something is terribly wrong. And thanks for taking my call. Wow. Uh, Calvin is you. on fire. Yes, Calvin is. Calvin yes, is. is the, is yes, the fifth is. Person on the show. Yes. Calvin, tonight. I need you to come to my office on 83rd Street and come see me, please. You know, but you know let's talk about these questions. meters. Let's yes. talk about these meters, then I'm going to come to you, Chase Smith. Parking meters, big controversial issue in the city. Absolutely. Some people think we gave that away. Okay, yeah, we got a $1.1, $1.2 billion check, but we pretty much gave them away for 75 years. In your ward, parking meters, what's your resolution? Parking meters, it was unfortunate that they sold the parking meters. We could have managed that. Uh, hired a management company, for example, and done a much better job and kept all the revenue, paid them a percentage. Now that we have them, now that we have this horrible situation, I want to do whatever I can to read this contract, which they should have done three years ago. And since I am a lawyer, I want to look at it and see if there's any way we can avoid it. But I know it's difficult right now. Chase Smith. Parking meters. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people have a huge problem, not necessarily with the meter itself as much as the deal that Chicago cut. What's your well, angle on that? Well, yeah, when we look at the $1.3 million deal, and then when you look at Wall Street, it's being sold for $12, $13 billion. billion. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, there, there's an a issue of trust. Can the community trust their local official to make the best deal for the community mm -hmm. and for Chicago? Apparently, they can't, in, in, in my case at least. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, you know, uh, what we would want to do is make sure that when someone goes to church, they don't have to pay. 
mm. to go to church. Mm. We, we definitely in our wards need to make sure that to pray to God or to enjoy the lake. Let's not just talk about war. Yeah, right. You know, a city councilman is a city councilman. Let's talk about going to the lakefront. You shouldn't have to pay to sit down with your family at the beach and have a picnic. Or ride wow. your bike. I told, I told, right. I told, I told wow. it, but I don't know those parking meters. Um, my alderman uh, happened to vote it for that parking meter deal. Uh, and there wasn't no parking meter deal for us, no lease, because if you lease anything for 75 years, who's gonna be around 75 years from now? They sold that. Mm. You, you don't sell off your assets. I mean, we you get constant money coming in, uh, uh, so you was right in, in terms of uh, managing it right. The city could have managed it itself. It didn't have much, so much thievery in that department. As you notice, they had a lot of problems with that some 20 years ago, mm -hmm. with them stealing money from the parking meters from the, from the beginning and get a management service. Now, all of a sudden, you're selling off your assets. If the city had managed that right, we would have still had assets, money coming in on a regular but basis. But I want to yeah. go yeah. a step further with that. I want to go a step further and say, Black aldermen haven't been doing their uh -oh. duties. And, I, and I'm going to talk about it like this. When you have black aldermen that have 95% voting records with the mayor, and you go look at Scott Waggles Pack, who said, no, something's wrong with this parking meter deal, and waved it in the air, and nobody listened. Mm. Nobody, the, the warner was there. Something's wrong. But oh, the and black it's aldermen. Because you, have to, you voted for something up. in two days. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a municipal lawyer, licensed. Yeah. It takes me six months to get a zoning change for a barbershop. They voted for a $1.15 billion, with a B, mm -hmm. dollar deal yeah. in two days. Okay, let's, let's move on this because what you said, Mr. Smith, is another question that I just had. Is Chicago's African-American political power a thing of the past? Now, <laughs> let me preface that. Oh, you don't have because to we saw what happened to the three black candidates running for mayor. Mm -hmm. They got pummeled. Okay, but, but bigger than that, will we have a strong mayor, weak council? Rahm Emanuel's in town now, and it's high noon. Or will we have a strong, a stronger council? Talk to me. Yeah, let, let me tell you this here. First of all, uh, you got a terrible council at this moment. <laughs> so I'm saying, all, well, blacks, black aldermen, we're talking about black aldermen, to do what? To do what in their communities? They go along to get along. So, I mean, if you go along to get along, you can't change any, anything in, in that vein. Yeah, you're going to have a stronger uh, aldermanic contingency when uh, people like myself is elected to that office, because I believe in a strong council, weak mayor. The mayor don't... Uh, activate legislation, the city council does. Mm. The city council derives its power from Springfield in the constitution of the state of Illinois. And see, people got to understand those type of dynamics to understand why you send an all of them down there, not to go along to get along, but to bring back your fair share. You know what? You mentioned, you mentioned Alderman Wagaspak. You talk about a free thinking progressive who's not afraid mm -hmm. to go against the mayor. Right. So often we're dealing with aldermen who may have cut some deals with Mayor Daley back in the day, who may not, who may want to say no, but it's like, okay, I'm gonna say yes. And that's frustrating to me. Before I go to a package here, let me read some comments here quickly from Facebook. Kelly says, Gerard Cochran is getting my vote. Pamela says, Hal Baskin all the way. Tina says, if I lived in the sixth ward, Roderick would have my vote. Of course, she's referring to Mr. Sawyer. And I'm looking at a comment here from Janice. Janice says, I would vote for the rapper Che Smith. Mm -hmm.